got on the old eBay again. Imagine that. And I picked this up. Well, not the box, but I got a box containing a computer. And in this video, we're gonna go over what's in this box, what type of computer we got, and how I think for the price I paid, $120, why I think this is actually a pretty good deal. So let's open up the box. So now this box is pretty heavy. So I'm just gonna do the right thing, lay it down recklessly while lifting it without back support and just upgrade my back surgery probably till tomorrow. So let's get started with that. Yep. Yep. Herniated disc, check. Let's pop this thing open. Sacrifice a few more boxes to secure this. Let's see. Thank you for your purchase. Academic periwinkle caribou. I don't know. Yep, definitely heavy. All right, so we got ourselves a HP Z440, and I think for $120, I got a good deal. So let's get this on the bench. Let's talk about the specs, and um, let's try to play with this guy. So now that we got her up here, I gotta say one cool thing about it, you got go handles, pretty awesome. Just grab it, take it on the go. I mean, what, you could take it to a LAN party or something? Do people even do that anymore? But anyways, so it's the Intel Z440. These things were released back in like 2014. They used the whole Intel C612 chipset. There's some newer models, a newer variation. I believe this one is the Intel Xeon E5 1230V4, yada, yada, yada. So let's open up the side panel and uh, let's take a look. Just pull. Nice. So first things first, taking a look at it, I'm kind of happy that it has the memory coolers on it because I've actually seen some that don't come with it. And this by itself usually costs about 60 to $70 that I've seen on eBay. It gets expensive. I know the water cooler is about 100 bucks if you want to get the water cooler feature for it. We got our dust bunnies, which will blow this off. But I got to say, I'm a little disappointed with the seller. And here's why. It has no drives and as part of the listing it stated that it had a one terabyte mechanical drive and it had a 512 SSD so we'll have to reach out to the seller and hopefully they could um, fix the situation. So I think what I want to do now is actually just take this off so you got a little green tab over here and you can kind of see it over here we just squeeze them and pull up like so. So now I don't know if I said this earlier and I'll just kind of go over it again it's the Intel E5 1230V4. It has four cores, eight threads, max turbo of four gigahertz, base frequency of 3.7 gigahertz, and a TDP of 140 watts. So she gets a little toasty on it. Now, it did come with 16 gigs of DDR4. It's supposed to be ECC memory, but as you can see, um, just taking a look at it, this is an eight gig stick, and these are an eight gig stick over here and one 16 gig stick. So uh, the memory configuration is a little wonky on this, but for now, it'll work. Later on, I'll go ahead and fix it. So now for our power supply up here, it's a 700 watt, for, if I'm not mistaken on it. And the cool thing about it, which I kind of like about these Z440s, is that you have two six pins, as you can see with our graphics card. We'll talk about that in a second. So it kind of gives us, you know, some flexibility on the type of graphics cards that we can put in. Now, as far as like upgrading the power supply, I'm not 100% sure uh, if you look that these connectors are a little special. Well, you don't see the one over here, but as you can see this one over here, we got like what? One, two, three. Not enough pins for that, just to say the least. So I might look into that into the future, but for now, um, that's what we got. Now we got our graphics card, which let's take this out. We'll push this green tab right here on the bottom, this right here. Let's slide this out. Maybe it comes out. Kind of forgot. So there's a little tab right over here because it has this long bracket. I guess to keep it from moving and all that good stuff. So let's push that in. And now we should be able to get our graphics card. Maybe. Tell you what, man, these things are tight. All right. 
So we have the Quadro, it's the M4000. I'll be doing a separate video on this one, but that was one of the things that intrigued me about this deal was that um, it's the eight gigabyte graphics card. So um, it might hold up. I've never messed with one of these versions. I know the K2000 or the K4000, I forget which one I did the video on. They were actually pretty decent as a budget option. So maybe this one will be decent as well. And this little guy, I've never seen this before. It looks like a heat sink. Let's see, can, ice, whatever. Let's open it up and see what it is. I think it might be for like M.2. Okay, so this is our M.2. Let's see, is this the 512? Uh, doesn't say but I guess we'll find out it's kind of open this up this thing is so weird the way it has it set up mm, yep 512 m.2 so but what's kind of wonky is kind of the whole way they got it set up so i think i'm going to cut this thermal pad up a little bit so it's not sitting there and just wipe this because this is like really oily so now what's pretty bad about whoever did this they actually didn't take the uh plastic peel off of it so this was actually pretty much doing nothing i mean that's the risk that you take when you mess with the whole ebay thing and they did the same thing over here they didn't take that plastic piece off so i'm going to trim this down to size like a lot down to size i'll actually save these little pieces you never know so now that should be more better We just need it on the part that touches the heat sink, nothing else. So I think since I'm already getting started and now I'm kind of committed, I'm gonna go ahead and take off this heat sink. Let's put some fresh thermal paste on it, check the CPUs. I haven't fired this thing up, which you know, probably is good to fire it up. I haven't dusted it, I haven't really done anything. But since we had to do deal with this whole M.2 disaster there. Let's just keep going. Got a nice one, two, three, four, six pin. Yep, I think that's six. Our very, wow, that's uh, not really doing much there. Dust and stuck, so we got our very pretty bad thermal paste. So we'll clean that up. That should give us a couple of frames per second, right? So now for the part of the project that I enjoy most, let's go ahead and blow this out. Now that it's clean, we're just gonna do the right thing and just put way too much thermal paste because, well, you know, that's the thing. Perfect. So off camera in another video, went ahead and cleaned this thing up, fresh thermal paste. It was dried up pretty good. Also did the whole delete action on that whole retention bracket. I mean, I don't see the purpose for my needs. Probably for somebody else who has other things in stored for it. There we go. Slide this back to, you know, keep it from dancing. Let's throw some power on it. And let's find out if this computer works. 
power button, power button. Okay, we got power. Now, do we have video? I know the graphic card works. I've already tested it. That is always a huge sign of relief. Cool. In the BIOS, simple as pressing the F10 key. So let's look at our system information. So the Xeon E5 1630 V4 3.7. I said it before, but then again, you know, they said it was supposed to come with the whole mechanical drive and the other drive, but it didn't. But then it came with this M.2, so I'm not sure on that one. We got 32 gigs of ECC RDDR4 21. 33 megahertz the unfortunate thing is is that because I only have the sticks and the configuration I have I probably won't be able to utilize the whole quad channel thing so we're just gonna have to run with it what we got other than that I got my thumb drive installed got the boot settings ready to go so let's save and let's see if this thing boots off my USB thumb drive and let's install Windows 11 all right, off to a good start. So not gonna bore you with the whole installation. Need to install Windows 11, drivers, games, all that good stuff. So let me spend the next million years doing that. We'll come back, we'll see how this thing performs. Back in the old Fortnite and it's actually very playable. The biggest thing that I've noticed with this um, graphics card CPU combo is that there's not a lot of stutterings. The frames do dip to the 30, so we're at 1080p low settings, and I'm sure we could tweak it to get even more FPSs, but I mean, still playable, pretty decent. Our CPU utilization is 32%, GPU pegged out way at 100%, so playable experience, not a lot of stutterings. I think it's pretty good to go, and to think about it, I mean, $120 for the system, right out of the box you're able to gain, I think it's pretty cool. So we got the whole Tomb Raider going, 1080p, low settings. I mean, if you go any higher, it's not going to look too good. Might get a little jittery, you know, definitely no bueno. But, I mean, 40 frames per second, ouch, that probably really hurt. I actually feel bad for her. So 40, 50, I mean, occasionally you'll get a drop to about 30, just depending on the scene and what you're doing. But, I mean, still, for $120, and I cannot stress this enough, right out of the box, just installing Windows, I mean, we're gaming. So, CPU, 99%, 45%, excuse me, GPU, 99%. She's getting a little noisy, she's a little bit toasty, but not terrible. But then again, I do have the side panel open, so I imagine she might, you know, make some rumble. Another one of my favorites, and I can't wait until they port the uh, sequel to the PC, Horizon Zero Dawn. I love this game, fantastic. 1080p original presets, or however they have it like that, and we're about... 40 frames per second. I think the lowest I've seen in a battle scene is about 30 frames per second. But still, I mean, we're, 30 frames per second is playable and it's not bad. And I can't emphasize the price for this enough. So, very happy with this. And um, I think we got some good bang for the buck, guys. So, this Z440 has some really good bang for the buck. And primarily, it just depends on the price that you get it for. And that's just standard for anything you buy. I mean, this one came with 32 gigs of memory, DDR4, the M4000 graphics card, which is actually pretty decent and helps us out a lot and the CPU but not only that there is some upgrade options to consider one good thing about it is there is an upgrade path to it and the first one obviously is the graphics card yes we could play 1080p low settings as is but we do want to get more and considering the fact that this graphics card has value of 80 to 100 dollars um, really puts this thing um, as a good bang for the buck I posted it on eBay and I got a buyer for $100, so that's getting shipped out. So I made $100 profit of that, which makes the value of this computer $20, and we could put that $100 towards a better graphics card, if not buy one for $100. Something to think of if you see it. Now the memory situation does need to be addressed as it does have mismatch memory and I just kind of ran it as is just to mostly see how this thing works out of the box in case you buy something like this and you just want to know, hey, can I just run it? Now we're running two 8 gigs and a 16 gigs, they're various speeds, and we're not really utilizing the whole quad channel, and I even have my skepticisms if even the dual channel is working properly on that. So we're definitely going to have to get some memory, and considering this is a server platform, we're going to have to pick up some ECC, which ECC I find they're going for about 16 gig sticks for about $20, so that's definitely something, and we could max it out to 128 gigs, will I go that high? I don't know, depends how deep my wallet is. So now the CPU is something that we need to address too. So the E5 1630 V4, although not a slouch, 
we can get something a little better. I mean, the 1650 would have been preferred, but I think we could find something a lot better that's really gonna give this thing um, a little boost and still within the budget. Now with these Xeons, the more cores you add, the lower clock speed you get and you lose single core performance as, well, Xeon is for multi-core uh, performance workloads. But there is a couple of options I am looking at that's gonna give me a good balance and um, we're definitely gonna be looking into that in the future. So yeah, we're not done with this. This is not gonna be a flip project. It's actually gonna be my personal little project I'm just gonna have fun with. Um, like I said, I got some things I really wanna do. I'm definitely thinking about modding this case a little bit, just kinda, you know, having fun with these platforms. You know, the cool thing about these old servers is that this is something that I couldn't afford back in the day as these things were going for like twelve to $3,000 depending on the spec. But the fact that $120, they still have some value and I could probably utilize it for a couple other things I wanna do that's pretty cool so stay tuned for part two you definitely need to subscribe and hit the notification bell as you don't want to miss it i hope you enjoyed this video comment down below thoughts concerns criticisms improvements and even suggestions of what you think that we can do to modify this and as always we'll see what we come up with next